I've compiled the top four exercises that you guys struggle with feeling in your glutes. What's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. For this week's video, I'm gonna be going over a detailed form breakdown for four lower body glute focused exercises. Let's get into it. So for the first exercise, we're gonna be breaking down the form for a glute focused barbell RDL. So we're gonna start with the bar. When you're doing a glute focused barbell RDL, I'm gonna show you what it shouldn't look like and what a lot of people tend to do when they're doing RDLs. If you're thinking that your back hurts and you don't feel it in your glutes, most likely your form is looking like this. What was wrong with that form? Number one, you were not following the bar path close enough to your knees. The bar path should be like what I call quote unquote, scraping your shins at all times. So when you go down, that's gonna help with your form right there. Right there, you're gonna feel a little bit of adjustment. Cause when you follow the bar path and you imagine scraping your shins all the way down and all the way up with the barbell, it already helps you engage your core more and it helps your spine stay more neutral instead of going out all the way here, right? Also, what else was wrong with that form that I was showing? You were curving your lower back and not engaging your core. So your lower back was overcompensating because your core was just not engaged. When I say your core is not engaged, a lot of people get confused and they're like, what do you mean? What does engaging your core mean? Engaging your core means literally if someone were to punch you in the stomach, you're tightening your stomach. So like you seize up your stomach. So if someone were to take a blow to your gut, at least it hurts less, right? Cause you're literally flexing your stomach so that the punch will hit hurt less. That's what I mean by engage your core at all times when you're doing any compound lift or any exercise in general. Always pretend that someone's gonna punch you in the gut at any given moment, because when you flex and tighten your core, it helps protect your spine. Flexing your core braces your spine, therefore when you're doing especially heavy lifting, your lower back and your spine isn't gonna overcompensate for the lift, right? Because your core is protecting it. So that's what was wrong with that form as well. My spine was just like, you know, I was just letting my stomach kind of hang loose and it was making my lower back curve. So when I was pulling the weight up, it hurts. Now we have two cues, keeping your core tight as if someone's gonna punch you right in the gut. Core tight, bar path, scraping. Number three, your neck wasn't neutral. I was looking up at myself in the mirror. I know we all wanna look at how beautiful our gym fits are on this day and see our beautiful form and see all our gains in the mirror. But unfortunately, it's not good to do that because your neck is not gonna be neutral with your spine. When you're doing any sort of compound movements, you want your neck to be neutral with your spine. So you should not be looking up at yourself in the mirror because when you're looking at yourself in the mirror, your neck is gonna be doing this. Bruh. Right, you see, that's not good. You wanna be looking 45 degrees in front of you. So find a spot on the floor that's about 45 degrees in front of you. And that way, you follow it all the way down, you follow all the way up. I'm looking at that spot the whole time. Now, those are like, I would say the most basic form tips that like you always need to keep in mind when you're doing an RDL to like prevent injury. Now, when we get into the realm of like, why can't I feel it in my glutes, right? So maybe you've done all those form tips that I just mentioned, you're keeping your core braced, you are keeping your neck neutral, you're following a perfect bar path, scraping your shins, right? You've done all that, but you're still like, oh, Maddie, I can't feel it in my glutes. Well, because you're probably not doing a glute-focused barbell RDL. One, you're probably wearing the wrong shoes. I'm not saying these are the perfect shoes for leg day. I, I like my Air Force Ones, but even so, if you struggle to feel something in your glutes, take off the shoes. Buy shoes. <laughs> The flatter the shoe, aka a Converse, a Nike Blazer, okay, those are good, or even a squatting shoe, it's up to you. Those are all nice flat shoes to, to use on leg day. If you don't have any of those, right, and you're wearing chunky runners, if you're wearing that on leg day, you gotta cut that out. Stop wearing that during your lifts, okay? That's probably why you literally can't feel anything in your glutes. Because when your heel is elevated like that on like a chunky platform, your, your feet aren't like fully locked in on the floor and engaged and your toes aren't able to spread out and really like engage with the floor. Sometimes if you notice in my workout videos on Instagram or TikTok, 
I will literally like be in socks or sometimes in bare feet if I'm on vacation because it just really helps engage everything better than if I'm like balancing on this platform of a runner, right? So one, either a flat shoe or you're gonna lift in your socks. That's already gonna help with feeling it through your heel all the way up towards your glute. Number two, there's very minor differences between a just a stiff leg deadlift, which is just like more hammy focus. And then there's also a difference between like a glute focus barbell RDL. Let me show you the difference. So this is a stiff leg. That's a stiff leg deadlift where I was going all the way down to my ankle and then I was coming all the way up, which like, like normal, and there was minimal bend in my knee. I would say the two differences between a glute focused barbell RDL and a stiff leg deadlift, which will make drastic differences in you feeling it in your glutes, is one, the bend in your knees, two, the actual range of motion. Glute focused, you're going to stop just below your shins, just below your shins, and you're also going to bend your knees more drastically than a stiff leg deadlift, okay? Like you're pushing a door open with your glutes. So I stop right here, just below my shins, and I come up. And I don't over squeeze. A lot of you are coming up aggressively from your RDLs and over squeezing forward. You're losing the tension in your core, you're losing the tension in your glutes, and you're gonna break your back. Literally, you're gonna break your backs. So don't do that. Keep that squeeze in your glutes, that tension in your glutes by never locking out your knees. Never lock out your knees, never overextend forward. That bend in my knee as if I'm pushing a door open with my glutes, that, that exaggeration of the bend of the knee when I'm going down actually is going to be your cue when to stop the barbell. So if you're ever confused, like where do I stop the barbell? You don't need to go all the way down to your ankles because then you're gonna lose all the tension in your glutes. Also, when you come to the top, you don't wanna over squeeze your glutes and lock out your knees. It's gotta be like big bend in the knee on the way down. And then when you come up and you're about to lock out, my knees, notice, are not locked out. They're actually the slightest bit bent. And that keeps insane tension right here in my glutes. I haven't lost the tension in my glutes because there is that slight, slight, slight bend there. That is the key to feeling RDLs in your glutes. For a, a perfect glute focused barbell RDL, those are my top form breakdown tips. And I promise you guys, just practice and practice and practice. Ego lifting aside, start with the barbell and add very small weights at a time because perfect form comes first before we like add on all that weight, right? Exercise number two. We are going to be going over Bulgarian split squats. One of the number one exercises out there for lower body that I see so many beginners struggle to get down the form. And I don't blame you. Honestly, Bulgarians are the worst. Not Bulgarians, not Bulgarians. Bruh. But like Bulgarian split squats, not actual Bulgarians, guys. Bulgarian split squats are the worst. So I don't blame all beginners that are like so intimidated by this and they hate it and they don't touch this exercise for like any of their glue workouts. But we gotta do the things that we are most uncomfortable doing and we gotta get the form down right. And then that way, it'll be less intimidating and maybe you won't skip it in your glute days now because it is a great glute exercise. So let's get the form down and then we'll become Bulgarian demons. With a Bulgarian split squat, there are two variations, quad focused, glute focused. We'll go over both, but let's go over quad focused first. So quad focused, key things here, you want your foot closer to the bench. Okay, so the closer your foot, the more your quad's gonna be engaged. You also want your spine to be up neutral, like literally straight. Your torso is gonna be like this, and your leg is gonna be closer to the bench. Two key tips there already. So closer to the bench, back foot here as per usual, like a regular Bulgarian, and torso upright always. See that? I feel that all in this quad right here, okay? Yeah, you're gonna feel it a little bit in your glutes just like any other lower body exercise, but the reason why it's quad focused is because this variation of form is more focused on my quads. Now, Maddie, what about glute focus? I wanna grow my glutes. Guys, I got you. Don't worry, we're gonna get into that right now. Glute focused Bulgarian split squats are two key things different from this. Glute focused foot further away from the bench, torso not upright, leaning like so. Spine, neck neutral, like RDLs, right? Everything neutral all times, core tight, as if someone's gonna come hit me right in the stomach and you're gonna go like an escalator motion. Think of an escalator at the mall, an escalator in your apartment building, an escalator diagonal. Quad focused, 
Elevator, glute focused, further away, lean, escalator, diagonal. All right, now I have a little trick. If you're confused and you're like, Maddie, but the foot placement, how did you know to just perfectly hop out and know that was like the perfect length away from the bench? Well, I don't blame you if you're a beginner and like I can kind of just gauge it because I just know I've been doing Bulgarians for years now. But if you're new to it and you're like, oh, I don't know where my foot should be, I'm confused and you're doing all this shuffly shuffly. One of the few trends that I actually don't despise on TikTok and Instagram that I think is very useful and very helpful for beginners is this trend. Sit on your back heel, extend the working leg that you're going to be using out all the way to the furthest possible stretchy point and your heel here where it's landed is now where we're going to step forward. That is perfect length away from the bench for a glute focused Bulgarian split squat. So whoever on social media posted that helpful tip, honestly, I would tell you guys if it was BS, that's not BS. That, it's really, really helpful if you're a beginner and you're struggling to find your foot placement. Extend all the way out, step forward, come up, lean down. All right, same thing with an RDL too. Eye pathway, 45 degrees in front of you. You're not looking up at the mirror like this. Let's add some weight. And that is how you're gonna become a demon at Bulgarian split squats, guys. No more skipping it in your glute workouts now that you're like perfect at the form, okay? All right, guys, for our third form breakdown exercise, we're gonna be going over B-stance barbell hip thrusts. Why not regular hip thrusts or cast glute bridges, Maddie? Because if you've watched my other videos, I've already kind of given some pointers on how to do cast glute bridges and, and regular hip thrusts, but I haven't gone over B-stance hip thrusts yet on my channel. So this is gonna be very useful because this is one of my favorite, 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 if not my favorite, like all time favorite glute building exercises that I think is highly underrated. You know, like a B-stance hip thrust is not only a unilateral exercise, so it can help with muscle imbalances, but it's literally, um, what do you call it? A great compound exercise in the same, same boat, you know? It's like a compound, unilateral compound exercise. It's so amazing for growing your glutes. With a B-stance barbell hip thrust, same thing as you would set up a regular hip thrust. Get your pelvic pad, so it's right in the center of the smooth part there, so I know the weight's not gonna be wobbly. Roll that right onto your pelvic area here. Why do we use this? Because it just protects this area. Imagine you're hip thrusting with this like heavy metal bar and you've loaded on all this weight right and this bar is just like bruising your like hip bones here. That's not nice. Gotta get a nice little pad or roll up a mat. So we put that on here. The difference between a B-stance hip thrust and a hip thrust is that B-stance, like I said, is a unilateral compound movement. It works one leg at a time to help with muscle imbalances and strength imbalances. Okay, so with a regular hip thrust, you would kind of like shuffle out like this about shoulder width apart, toes slightly pointing outwards. So what the difference is, is we're only gonna shuffle one leg out to about shoulder width apart, which is gonna be this working leg in this case right now, our right leg and our non-working leg is gonna go out like this with our heel on the ground, very tip of our heel and our toe facing towards the ceiling. This non-working leg is here to pretty much just keep you stable, balanced and kind of help you get that weight up. Overall, just to help kind of balance the weight while you're working that one leg. Let's go through this. Foot's out here. When you come up, same thing with the bench. If you are short like me, I'm five foot two. I use stackables or if you have access to a short bench at your gym, that's great. I don't have access to a short bench at my gym. So I use these stackables. I stack four to five stackables. Right now I've stacked four. Where your sports bra strap is, that's where I place my upper back just below my rear delts right on the bench. I kind of look directly in front of me. Mine and neck is neutral even when I'm thrusting up. And then you'll see when I come up into a thrusting position, I make a tabletop 90 degree position. You should be 90 degrees when you come up. Very similar to a hip thrust, very similar to a cat glute bridge, you should be 90 degrees when you hit the tabletop position. It shouldn't be like overextending and over thrusting up to the point that you're curved like this, or it shouldn't be under thrusting if you've loaded too much weight. That's how you know you've loaded too much weight if you're not coming up 90 degrees or your foot is too far out. When your foot is further out like that and you're not 90 degrees, I'm my hamstrings are taking majority of that impact there. The closer your foot is, if my foot's too close, then that's wrong as well. I'm not 90 degrees. You see how my knee is going over my toes on that? When your knees are going over your toes, you're causing knee strain and it's gonna be more quad focused. My chin was kind of like tucked a little bit, not overly tucked. I looked directly in front of me. I kept my eyesight on one object in front of me to keep everything neutral. I was at 90 degree tabletop position at the top and it's the exact same form just with one leg version of a hip thrust. 
and then same thing, you would switch your legs. You'd take this non-working leg in, kind of align it again, this one out facing towards the ceiling, and now the impact is on this working leg. That's how you perfect a B stance hip thrust. Honestly, you should feel that all in your glutes, all in your glutes. Great glute isolation exercise, but at the same time, it's still a compound movement. That's why it's my favorite. Unilateral, isolation, compound movement. It's like everything all in one. Okay guys, for our fourth and final exercise for our form breakdown today, we're gonna be doing cable kickbacks. So first things first, if your cable is already not at the floor, what you're gonna do is you're going to pull this little lever out, okay? And you're gonna move your cable thingy, majig, all the way down to the floor, all right? Lock it in there, make sure it's locked and it can't move. So I know most of you see, most people wrap their ankle around with that Velcro strap, but me, I'm a little bit, you know, rough around the edges and I just like to use the little handle thing at the gym. I have small enough feet, okay, it works. But look, mine just slides right in there. So now that we're in, you wanna obviously not let this rest around your ankle, put the rough part, like the hard part of that handle away from where you'll be like feeling most of the pressure, right? So move the handle to the side. Now it's just the nice smooth strap against your ankle. Choose a weight with a kickback, right? Let me tuck, do the little shirt tuck so I can show you guys for educational purposes. So when it comes to cable, kick, kick, cable, kickback, to, cable kickbacks, a lot of people do this. Yet, yeah, no, no, we're not gonna do that, guys. Uncontrolled, number one. Too much of a bend forward, number two. Neck is all over the place, number three. And just absolutely no mind-muscle connection with your glutes, because you're literally flying. You're flying through the reps, can't do that. Gotta be controlled, and you also want to be kick a little bit outwards, if that makes sense. So not directly behind you, but a little bit outwards. And you're going to be keeping your legs straight. Did I mention that? You're not gonna be bending your knee like this. We're not doing donkey kicks, there's a difference. We're doing straight leg kickbacks, but at a little bit of an angle to really target this area of the glutes, our glute medius and a little bit of the under glutes here, right? So this area right here. You're going to hold the little pole here for some support. You're going to take a little bit of a step back away from the cable, so you're not gonna be right up against it where there's no tension here. You're gonna step a little bit behind you, like that. Okay, so now you're a little bit away. And you're going to instead not kick back like that, you're gonna kick a little bit outwards, all right? So slight bend. Keep your core tight. My core, I'm gonna lift my shirt. You see how my core is tight? My lower back is straight. Notice how my lower back's not like this. <laughs> that would hurt, that would very much hurt. Keep your lower back neutral, okay guys? Kick out, hold the tension there. Come back in, hold it, come back in, hold it, come back in. I think in general, even if you're not a beginner, I think it's more technical than people think it is. Like a cable kick act's actually pretty technical. As simple as it is of, of a movement, it's really not that simple. Like there's a lot of little minor fixes you need to make to a cable kickback for it to actually like target the proper area of your glutes that you're trying to target and isolate that area of your glutes. So that is why I decided today to add that in our little form breakdown lower body series. And honestly guys, try out those tips. Really take that into consideration when you're doing a cable kickback and I swear you'll feel it more in your glutes, I promise. I promise it will really help with your form. It'll help with your lower back pain because I, I know if you're doing it wrong, I know that lower back must be hurting, so. And there, you've perfected your cable kickbacks. All right guys, that concludes today's form breakdown video. I hope you guys found it useful and helpful and let me know in the comments what other exercises you'd like me to break down the form for and I can't wait to see you guys in the next video.